Welcome back to the Blended Online Learning Design series. This third video will take a closer look at how to get the most out of your virtual class meetings. Our previous video took a closer look at that first base ingredient in your online teaching smoothie, the digital classroom, that space online where you post information that's relevant to your class and your students interact with it as needed in a self-directed, self-paced fashion. This video will focus on the second key ingredient in that smoothie, which is the virtual meeting platform your video conferencing tool, Zoom or Google Meet or another choice, where you host those regularly scheduled live synchronous moments with your students, where you check in on them, teach them something new, or let them interact with their peers. Now, just a quick note about this video. We're not actually gonna be looking at how to deliver particular pedagogy or achieve particular learning outcomes. Rather, we're concentrating on how to create an environment where the students feel valued and welcomed and look forward to being a part of. To accomplish this goal, we're going to recommend three key strategies. The first one is to create community within your class from the very beginning of the course so that your students feel like valued individuals within the larger group. The second one is to clarify the expectations for engagement by your students. Unless you want to basically just monologue to your screen all year long, you're going to want some interaction with your students. So the expectation of that should be made clear from the get-go. As well, it's important that the students understand that this ability to interact through the screen is a skill that they really should develop to at least one extent or another based on their comfort level. Lastly, we're going to suggest leveraging checks with your students more often than you would have in a standard brick and mortar classroom. From behind the screen, it's difficult to get a beat on your students and understand, you know, what their mindset is like, what their mood is like, and whether they understand the content that you're trying to teach. By leveraging checks more often, by checking in with them more often, you can get a clearer picture of where their heads are at. Our first strategy is to take the time to create community within your class because it has nothing to do with the subject you teach or the pedagogical outcomes you hope to achieve and everything to do with the welcoming and warm environment that you create for your students that they want to be a part of. There are a number of options you can easily integrate into your personal teaching practice to achieve this. One of them is an opening and closing routine where you do an activity at the beginning and end of class that over time becomes part of the regular flow for the students. An example of this might be a meditative moment where you have the students close their eyes, take a deep breath, and just center themselves before the learning begins. Another option might be to post an interesting quote, question, or comment on screen that students see when they arrive because they know that it's gonna play a large part in the lesson to come. You can close your class with an activity such as a gratitude moment where each student takes a turn thanking somebody else in the class for something that they did during that time. Perhaps they asked an interesting question or made an insightful comment. Maybe they helped another student get past a hurdle, but you create a culture of appreciation amongst your students by doing this. You can also do icebreakers, such as a six word intro, where students are given only six words to be put perhaps on a slide deck or shared on the screen, six words that describe and define them. You'll also wanna do uh, pulse checks, where you basically are checking in with your students pertaining to their mental state, whether that's uh, about the academics or it's about their own just personal mood. And you can do that in a number of ways. You can have a conversation using an analogy like a bucket of water, and you can ask what's filling and emptying your bucket that day. Or you can use a tool like Pear Deck's interactive mood meter, where students can put anonymously a line on screen, and you can get the collective impression of where your whole class's head is at. Lastly, you can also break with all of this and break with the pedagogy at any time to play a video conferencing game. Many of them are verbal in nature, but they're also visual examples. One of them might be, for argument's sake, to ask your students to pick their favorite movie poster, make it their virtual background, and position themselves in such a way that they're overlapping a character properly. So an example might be throwing up a poster of the Avengers behind you and then taking the place of Captain America right in the middle. The students in the class can vote on their favorite and there can perhaps be a prize at the teacher's discretion. Clarifying expectations for engagement is just as important as building community in your virtual class. Making your course standards for both participation and preparation crystal clear is really the best way to facilitate the kind of student engagement you'd like to see, whether you're in the physical or virtual classroom. I also find that students tend to meet or even exceed expectations when they understand what the standards are and what purpose they serve. So when you're designing asynchronous tasks such as homework, your students are going to be more likely to complete their work and be prepared for your virtual class sessions 
if they understand how these tasks and activities serve their learning needs as well as the goals for getting the most out of the virtual class time together. From my experience, if you don't set clear expectations and norms, students tend to show up just for a participation grade and then end up doing the bare minimum. On the other hand, if you do set clear expectations early on, you will find that students are better able to be present and contribute to an engaged learning cohort in your class. Clarifying both preparation and participation expectations is a powerful way to remind students of the value of being lifelong learners and active participants in life. So regardless of what subjects you teach them, helping your students practice to actively prepare and take part in a virtual class will make them stronger in all personal, academic, and professional arenas going forward. Using rubrics is very helpful for clarifying standards and expectations. In this engagement rubric example from the Blended Consortium, you'll see collaborative work from our teacher group that really wanted to get on the same page about what kind of student engagement we were looking for in our classes. And in this example, as you can see, we distinguish between the kind of student behaviors and actions that might be called either glowing or growing or struggling. And we found this a very fruitful exercise in order to build a common understanding amongst the teachers before then trying to clarify our standards and expectations for students. We use this for virtual class sessions in Zoom, in-person face-to-face sessions, as well as for online discussion engagement. We also recognize the importance of communicating to quieter students how they too can represent their engagement, whether they're able to speak up in class as readily as their classmates, or they can also demonstrate via chat, online discussions, or even via email before, during, or after class sessions. This is meant as really a launching point for teachers to think about engagement and also to think about how they might adapt this into a system or a checklist or a rubric that works for them and their students. In this example, this is a much simplified version of the engagement rubric. It's a checklist format, and this makes it much easier for a teacher to give fast and efficient feedback to students on how they're doing. It's also a handy tool to use for student reflection and asking students to evaluate themselves and how they are doing in engagement in your classes. Here's an example from a colleague who took inspiration from that first rubric example and has developed other checklists and rubrics based off of that. This is an online presence checklist that looks at the big picture of how students participate and contribute to the class cohort. She also uses a checklist for virtual class engagement. She finds this very helpful for um, letting students know what she's looking for from the very beginning of her classes. Here's yet another example just to show you that teachers can take this and adapt this in all sorts of different directions. This is a synchronous participation rubric, also with a link that takes you to a much fuller description of how this is used and other expectations that go along with this. But all this to say, these are available for you to look at and take inspiration from and build from, and hopefully you will find a system, whether it's a checklist or a rubric, that works well for you. Another way to make the most of your virtual class time is to leverage checks for understanding and breakout rooms. Digital checks for understanding are a great way to pause ask a question, and then have all of your students weigh in at once. You might ask questions about pace, about comprehension, or opinion polls. And you can do this in simple ways, using the chat function within your meeting tool, or a survey in Google Forms, questions in Poll Everywhere, Padlet, or even something like Pear Deck, which allows you to insert interactive questions into your presentation slides. Whatever tool you use, Digital Checks for Understanding are an opportunity for you to read your virtual classroom space and to make adjustments on the fly to your lesson plan or to share the collective responses of your 
students about a poll question that can then serve as a launch point to dive deeper. Of course, using breakout rooms is another great way to make the most of your virtual class time. It's pretty challenging to involve all of your students in a great conversation, especially in a virtual class space. So why not break them up into smaller groups and allow more voices to speak up and be heard at once? I recommend splitting your class into pairs and trios and then using a collaborative tool during the breakout sessions in order to help guide student conversation and to help debrief afterwards. My personal favorite is to use a collaborative Google slide deck and I make one page for each of the breakout rooms. So if students randomly land in breakout room four, they know to go to the slide for breakout room four and to follow the prompts. And that way you can use the same prompts and questions for all the breakout rooms. You could even use different unique prompts for each of the rooms. You can then watch the students populating their highlights and notes onto each slide. And then when you bring the group back together as a whole class, you could then use that slide deck to go page by page or jump around in order to debrief and look for the highlights of what came up in all of those different separate breakout rooms. Of course, there's lots of other collaborative tools like Jamboard and Moreau and Padlet that are wonderful for this as well. These are just a few initial ideas to get you thinking about how to make the most of your virtual class time. And we have curated a bunch of other resources available to help you as you build community, as you clarify expectations, and as you leverage checks for understanding and breakout rooms. We really appreciate you taking the time to watch this video today, and we encourage you to check out the rest of the topics in this series. As you can see, there are other videos all about optimizing collaboration, as well as formative checks for understanding. So we hope you check them out and thanks once again. Enjoy.